Hi, welcome to the Linux channel. Uh, I was uh, going through uh, some uh, news and then I stumbled across uh, an interesting uh, uh, feature uh, uh, which uh, they are incorporating in this, uh, you know, PSU as you can see here. The article is this. Uh, it's a Corsair PSU. Uh, you can find here. Yeah. So, you can see there it's a modular uh, power supply uh, unit uh, from Corsair. Uh, what is so special about this is uh, it is taking this uh, USB input to, to probe uh, various uh, you know uh, parameters of that power supply. Usually it does not uh, happen that way, but uh, they are providing that support and uh, they have uh, you know they have even done some uh, Linux uh, driver to do so. Okay, so it supports in Linux uh, where you can do some type of uh, hardware uh, monitoring and stuff. So, you can see there. Uh, they mentioned the patch and uh, using this uh, HWMON subsystem. So, it will be much soon in uh, 5.11 kernel and uh, this uh, news is uh, released quite long back. It is last year October, okay. But I never stumbled across, I just uh, uh, you know came across now and then I find uh, it is quite interesting. Uh, see uh, what happens is uh, you have commands like the sensors and uh, you know few other commands. So this comes from uh, a module called LM sensors. So, so if you install it in uh, Linux or Ubuntu, apt uh, install uh, LM sensors, so you will get this uh, support. So this also can monitor motherboard temperature and stuff like that if it supports okay so that is the lm sensor so same way if you want to see the hard drive uh, temperature and few parameters of course smart parameters so you can do via this uh, uh, you know smart ctl minus i dev sta minus x so it will print almost all parameters and as well it will print some histograms and stuff if you have any elaborate uh, Seagate uh, drive, it may even uh, print the uh, histogram of temperature and stuff because it is good to monitor temperature if it uh, gets overheated, it may damage the drive and stuff. So, as a part of that, you can see there, it is also going to show this uh, temperature and stuff. So, you can see there currently it is 36 uh, degrees Celsius, so like that. So, in this case, it is quite unique, uh, it is uh, able to monitor this uh, uh, the power supply unit uh, characteristics itself okay so i you know when you click this uh, patch you will get uh, this page and you can see there it is from kernel.org and uh, this uh, is included quite recently as you see here it is checked in at october 25th and also there is a documentation uh, in HWMON, under that there is this Corsair stuff. So, you can go to the Linux uh, kernel source, you should able to find this uh, documentation probably, okay. So, we are in HWMON, we search for Corsair and you can see there Corsair PSU, there is another one CPRO, I am not sure what is. Okay, you can see there they have provided a few uh, models uh, and then uh, that you know the documentation uh, explains what it supports and stuff. Okay, so since it is a documentation folder, it's just uh, you know contain references of the documentation. Versus here, it's a discussion about the overall patch. It's quite interesting because uh, they also mentioned this uh, source code uh, diffs. You can see there uh, they. Uh, they have, I mean, it has this uh, dock. Along with the dock, there are also these uh, diffs. You can see there, uh, this is that uh, stuff, uh, various specs and uh, stuff like that. And then you can see that uh, diffs of co code base actually. So, it is in drivers HWMON uh, PSU. So, we can go there, uh, drivers HWMON, yes, and Corsair. Uh, Let us just search for Corsair PSU and uh, you should able to find that uh, source code. So, I was uh, glancing through the source code, uh, you can either see here because it is the whole thing is plus because it is recently added, <laughs> there is no uh, you know bug fix or something that you will find any diffs, it is just almost it is a new thing added. So, everywhere there is a plus, okay. So, 
I was just glancing through this driver and uh, having a look and then I was uh, seeing that uh, what they have done for initialization and stuff and I stumbled across this uh, probe. So generally when I uh, go through any driver code I see that uh, module init part and as well I go through the probe stuff because that's where the you know action starts. So if uh, you are uh, learning uh, you know device driver uh, development see uh, the probe uh, of course I mean you learn various things about the character and uh, you know uh, block drivers and stuff like that but uh, the probe is a thing where uh, when the driver initialization happens uh, okay it gets called hence uh, you see there uh, in under this HID driver uh, uh, data structure they are registering all this callbacks okay so you can see there uh, you know these are the various uh, file ops for this uh, driver right so hid driver and under that they are registering all this stuff so if you see uh, module in it okay this doesn't have that uh, stuff i guess module hid driver yeah it doesn't have maybe some other uh, file is binding it or some other way it is getting started anyways you can see there uh, hid driver uh, you can open this you will find uh, the basic uh, data structure and all the callbacks it is supporting so we are supposed to populate this uh, you know callbacks so under that you can see there you have this uh, this table it has all these supported models and uh, specs okay under this id table and then you have this uh, probe api and remove and uh, raw event actually so as it suggests uh, you know the probe is the one uh, it gets initialized so i was going through that before you know shooting this video uh, like i mentioned in the last video i may not take more frequently because uh, uh, unlike before because i am really busy with some uh, project so i am just going through the news and stuff before i start my work and uh, get ready for that <laughs> you know client stuff so i thought uh, this is an interesting thing to cover so you can see there you have this uh, probe api and you see there there are various uh, memory you know getting uh, memory uh, allocation happens uh, so kz malloc they are doing so other than that uh, uh, yeah it is under this uh, gfp kernel uh, uh, you know what to say uh, gfp id okay so we can also read from here okay so probe dev m kz malloc so it is some variant of k malloc and you can see there dev, uh, dev m uh, you know kre alloc or something kz alloc i'm sorry kz alloc which is internally calling this uh, dev m uh, kz k m alloc and uh, if you click this further you will find uh, the actual source code okay uh, of that k m alloc uh, let's go to this uh, c file so somewhere you will find that it has you know this type of source code so somewhere it does all that uh, stuff so you can anyway read the source code and all so resource managed k malloc and stuff so let's go back so it is uh, doing this uh, you know uh, uh, you know it is uh, allocating that resources that's what it is doing and uh, something like H hid parse and uh, it is slowly starting that various uh, subsystems uh, within the driver okay so in a way you can see there it is doing this uh, Corsair PSU in it and uh, so and so stuff and then finally it is getting that stuff ready and uh, if there is any failure or something they are uh, doing this uh, uninitialization of resources. So usually you will find this uh, way of things happening in this uh, you know probe uh, uh, API and uh, this is more prominent if you read any USB drivers and stuff. So we go back and pick some random driver okay uh, we pick some random driver see i'm i'm also going to give you an interesting link uh, you can find uh, this orelia and apart from that you can find this official uh, kernel uh, document from kernel.org so you see there uh, this document is about uh, device drivers infrastructure and uh, so and so stuff they mention about this uh, bus uh, type and uh, stuff like that so you will find all this you know probe uh, getting in you know in uh, you know getting attached to that you know 
data structure so even that data structure has this callback so this way what i suggest is uh, when you initially reading all this stuff like i mentioned first thing is uh, kernel programming is not for beginners okay if you are uh, very new to coding if you are very new to career if you are very new to uh, programming first uh, you need to be an expert in programming i am not saying uh, certain c puzzles and stuff i am saying real you know projects okay real hardcore projects which can span across uh, many thousands of lines of code so in in multiple files spanning across not just one long file okay so once you are uh, you know an expert in that slowly you can start with uh, you know kernel uh, uh, study the source code and stuff like that and then once you are uh, good in kernel programming then i i can suggest that you can slowly venture into driver programming unfortunately people don't do that people just to see some uh, job uh, profiles uh, some job listings and then they start you know thinking about switching in this domain and then uh, they think uh, how i can become a driver developer and stuff i i really feel that is the dumbest way you start your career okay so you will ruin your career if you don't follow this type of step by step approach okay because you are nowhere when you want to become a driver developer as a beginner you are just not fit for kernel programming if you are not fit for kernel programming how can you be a fit to do some driver programming okay hence i'm saying take your time uh, hence my videos are always you know fragmented okay so i don't ever start from here to here and stuff like that it it is lot of things are there you learn lot of fragments slowly you will get to know and then you learn also some random books i don't always recommend books but you know sometimes ldd is fine to read some basics which although it is outdated uh, when you think about the kernel uh, standpoint at this you know this thing uh, whatever the recent uh, releases w versus what they have given examples in that book so but it is a good start you can read some basics okay so that's the thing so you can see there uh, you have this uh, probe api so uh, i can attach this link and uh, it is um, you know various uh, this thing see usb api linux usb api you can see there uh again here you can uh, go through that uh, driver examples whatever they mention uh, they will have uh, those uh, references those callbacks and stuff okay so that way you can uh, you know gain your expertise and uh, anyway coming back to this so uh, we can uh, browse through any usb stuff and uh, let's imagine uh, we go to some random uh, driver okay so something like serial and uh, some device random stuff we pick and see we can able to find that api and the overall uh, model okay yeah you can see there uh, port probe and this is the associated api and uh, this is that uh, usb serial driver and uh, this is the instance name because this is the hardware so they put that hardware name underscore device for easy to refer okay so you can see there somewhere here module in it starts and usb register driver and you have this control driver instance and then if you come here this is uh, the various uh, you know uh, callbacks are there registered over here usb uh, i mean sorry <laughs> that fi f8 1534a underscore control and you have these things registered hence uh, what uh, you know you need to have that flow is uh, if you are uh, going through a specific driver see that uh, data structures and see the overall uh, way it is initialized and uh, things are started okay so that's how you should go through and also of course some theory about uh, the overall uh, you know hardware specific you know architecture and stuff but when it comes to this thing uh, this is where the problem is if you think you know reading the books the problem is they will give one corner case and that is already outdated and it is already a depreciated code so whatever they discuss in the book is already over it's just depreciated code no now that same code no longer works like i mentioned in that uh, you know recent video of porting my own uh, kernel code uh, uh, you know from uh, uh, old uh, supported kernel to a modern kernel so what happens is such things are quite common so you can see there there is this uh, probe is there control probe 
So we go here and we can see there what they are doing here. Enable our ports uh, in this uh, they are doing versus here this uh, port probe is there. Here again uh, you can see there. Again you can see like uh, you know uh, they are uh, allocating their needed resources and uh, if you want to start you can explore first what type of resources have been uh, you know required to initialize this uh, you know driver and then uh, you can see there <coughs> there um, uh, you know they are registering this uh, whatever this uh, interrupts looks like and then uh, the other subsequent stuff so that's what so i recommend if you are uh, starting uh, go through these aspects and uh, see various samples uh, whichever you feel comfortable whichever uh, uh, you know you may likely to work okay because i have students coming from uh, you know computer science they have uh, a different preference i got also students mostly from triple e and ec they mostly come from embedded uh, software development and then they jump on to this uh, linux uh, kernel software development and uh, stuff so for them it's a different priority they work in some bus drivers and uh, usb drivers and uh, you know um, mostly things like that <laughs> okay versus i see mostly guys coming from computer science if they are working in uh, uh, kernel uh, development and uh, any uh, drivers uh, they usually work in some network stuff or uh, storage and uh, you know some random stuff or sometimes they may work in complete out of this driver layer so other subsystems they work which is where usually my expertise comes in i am not a mundane driver developer i am i am more generally interested in other top level subsystems or let it be storage or networking whatever i am more interested in that you know top level subsystem but just below that you know the sockets or that user space you know interaction interface of linux kernel so that's where i like to be myself in as long as i you know touch the kernel part so i recommend uh, go through that uh, take various examples and see that uh, overall what you get an idea about that probe api and uh, if you are writing your custom driver just uh, see that uh, you try to make your code Uh, comply with whatever things are needed and then slowly you can uh, write your custom kernel module and see whether your kernel accepts okay when when you are developing it accepts uh, or compiling it accepts like you uh, you know like i mentioned in that last video about uh, porting my kernel uh, code so i recommend uh, you know even uh, watching this video because i have done some live uh, coding there so just make sure you comply second you make sure that you just uh, populate this uh, whatever needed bare minimum needed uh, apis and uh, those corresponding data structures because these are usually callback apis so if you are doing any dummy drivers or uh, some virtual drivers so just do that and uh, you know just populate most probably it will accept and it will uh, agree and uh, it will instantiate although you know it may not do anything internally but it will instantiate so something like that you can experiment but overall this is what happens in the probe api okay so take various examples and you will find yourself okay so hope you enjoyed this uh, video like i mentioned i may not take frequently like before if you have anything to discuss you can send a mail mostly i will be you know interested discussing in email because we can discuss more elaborate or if not if it is a quick query you can be in touch with comments also but if you have some question and if i have covered in the past search the title and space the linux channel in a general google search or youtube you may find it okay so hope you enjoyed this show thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye